Welcome to Snapdragon in 5, a new series where we talk about all things Snapdragon in different spots around San Diego, Qualcomm's hometown. I'm your host, Tech Me Out. I'm a content creator, tech enthusiast, and an entrepreneur. And like many of you, I'm also a part of the Snapdragon Insiders, a global community full of millions of Snapdragon fans. Insiders are a vocal community. You ask us what you want to know, and we'll tell you. And in this series, we're going to be answering a few of those questions. Today, I am downtown at the Blind Borough having tacos with our special guest, Nit and Demon from Qualcomm. And today we're talking about none other than 5G devices. Thanks for joining us, Nitin. Happy to be here. Are you ready for your five questions about 5G? I'm ready. Awesome. So the very first one, who invented 5G? Like, how did it come about? 5G is not owned by any one company or mm -hmm. person. Uh, many companies in the mobile ecosystem from around the world came together and contributed to the design, creation, and rollout of 5G. Mm -hmm. Qualcomm played a major role in inventing some of the key technologies that are foundational to 5G, and we're proud of helping push 5G around the world. Cool. I know when I'm watching TV, I see all these different ads about different forms of 5G, nationwide 5G, ultra-wideband 5G. Like, what are the differences? How would you explain that? Well, 5G can be implemented over a wide variety of uh, frequency bands, all the way from low frequency bands up to what we call uh, millimeter wave bands. And each one comes with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. For example, for wider area coverage, like over an entire city or rural areas, they would tend to use more lower bands because of better propagation. But for high density areas where there's a lot of users and a lot of data consumption, you will lean towards millimeter wave bands because it can handle that sort of capacity. Mm -hmm. We believe that the best 5G networks will use a mix of all the available frequency bands to the carrier so they can really offer the best service to the location and the user that they're targeting. I know like right now we're near Petco Park where the Padres play. How would you say 5G might start to impact our stadium experience? Well, I think uh, sports fans are going to love 5G and what it makes possible. Not only are, will it do things that we wish we had, for example, being able to just have phone calls or text at the stadium, yes. continue to stream your videos yes. or share and upload your photos or videos from, from the game, mm -hmm. but it'll also enable new use cases which we haven't seen before. For example, regardless of what seat you're at in, mm -hmm. in the stadium, you can access multiple angles for different cameras around the stadium so you get that the extra special shot of, of the, the player that you want to see in real time. You could also do a 360 degree video feed so you, you can see a 360 view, maybe the player's view of the stadium and how he sees the play happening so you can replay or those close calls the, the way you want it. Wow, that sounds so cool. Like it's gonna definitely enhance and amplify the experience that we're currently having. Cause I know when you mentioned about, you know, struggling with streaming sometimes without 5G, right. <laughs> to have that and then alleviate that would be Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so um, I guess in thinking about that, like, what, what would you say are some of the advantages in having a 5G device right now? Today, there's a lot of developments going on in 5G, exciting mm -hmm. new use cases. For example, even simple things like streaming your video, mm -hmm. you get much higher quality video, higher resolution. So everything you watch is much crisper, more reliable, whether you walk across around the corner of a building or you go indoors your gaming experience is much better. So mobile gaming, it's much more responsive to your touch because of low latency. Your file downloads, you can download an entire movie in a few seconds, which is what? incredible, right? <laughs> um, if you have apps, a lot of us store data on, yeah. on apps on the cloud, and those are all seamless today because you can't tell the difference between whether it's the data sitting on your phone or if it's in the cloud, and 5G makes that possible. Sounds like a much more seamless experience. Right. I'm definitely here for that. <laughs> So I see your phone in front of you now. Like, what would you say is the app that you use the absolute most and why? Well, today I end up using video conferencing okay. more often than anything else just because of work and keeping in touch with family, mm -hmm. which needs, you know, want to make sure your calls are reliable. You can see the video and the screen shares and the audio. Uh, so I end up using that uh, the most. But if you ask my daughter, she's doing the live 5G avatars or AI Ooh. avatars online chatting with her friends. So ah, yeah. cool. do you happen to hop in with her sometimes and do the avatar with her? Sometimes, but it, it's, 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 um, it's more fun for her than for me. I, I just end <laughs> up looking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a cool, fun experience. Definitely. Yeah, it is. Awesome. 
Oh, food is here. So I think it's time we dine in. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in today. You can feel free to check out the description box down below for some more information on the Snapdragon Insiders. And while you are down there, you can also hit the like button and that subscribe button if you feel inclined to. Till the next video, hey, cheers. cheers. <laughs>